Hey everyone, and welcome to the Philip Show. I am Philip, and I'm super excited that you're here. I'm gonna grab my coffee so we can jump in. So today, as many of you know, um, I'm an identity branding expert as well as a marketing strategist. So I love everything marketing, everything that um, impacts um, how people are presented, where they can find people, um, what your package looks like, how can you connect with others? And more so than that, my general passion is in the why, why are you doing what you're doing? What is the, the driving force behind you? And today um, we are talking to an amazing wife, a mother, businesswoman, author, marketing website strategist, and virtuous woman. Listen, this thing does it all. She does it all. So join me in welcoming Tara Amatosha. Tara. Hey, how are you doing? Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing really good. You look great today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, welcome, 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 welcome to the show. So, so we're talking about marketing and really how our passions drive what it is that we're doing mm -hmm. for you. You are in the world of, you know, marketing and helping people, um, find their voice and giving them the avenues and the opportunities to express themselves in business. What do you do? This is what I feel like I do. I help people to find out their skill set, to find their skill set and to take their skill set and help them to create income streams, whether that is online platform, offline or structuring their business or creating a business, creating a website, uh, creating merchandise, whatever it is that their skill set is, you know, there's always something that someone says, oh, you're really good at that, you know, yeah. and you are good at that, but you're not making any money from that. So how can we get you to make money from that if that's your desire? So those are the, that's the thing that I'm really good at. And that's uh, what our business is built upon. I love that because a lot of times, the reason why I asked you that, and I didn't mean to throw you on the spot. The reason mm -hmm. why I asked you that is because that question is very difficult for a lot of people to answer. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, what do you do? And it's hard mm -hmm. to put it into a, a nice box to say, you know what, this is, this is who I am and this is, you know, how I can be helpful to you. Um, yeah. For you, help has helping people always been a passion for you? Um, yeah, it has. Um, I have my uh, degree in social work. So I started this life journey out as a social worker, was helping people in the foster care department, um, helping, you know, children find their forever families. And um, oh. that job was rewarding. However, it was very stressful, <laughs> very stressful on myself and on my family. And so when uh, my husband and I got married and we started having children, I knew that this is something that I personally could not do. There's a lot of people out there that are doing it. You know, they're married, have kids and conduct their family. But that was something that I did not feel that I could do anymore once I started having kids of my own. So now did you, was it, was it the, the, I know you said it was difficult. Was it the emotional difficulty or was yeah. it? It was, it was a mixture of the emotional, but also just like, I need to be there for my kids. I felt mm. like, you know, I grew up, both my parents worked and there's not, I mean, you know, a lot of, there's two family households at work, but they were gone. Like my dad worked nights and my mom worked days, you know, they mm. were like two shifts passing in the night. And I remember my neighbor, um, his mom wasn't home, but he had like, and then me saying me saying it sounds really funny. And I just grew up in a country town, so not not rich or anything like that. But they had a maid and like she was always there. And I oh. just thought it would be cool to have someone always there if something, you know, pops off, you know, something happens after school or whatever, just someone to talk to. So I just wanted to be present um with my kids while they were young. And I just didn't think I could I couldn't do that. I mean, when I was carrying my first child. I remember going out to see clients and I remember him bawling up in my stomach so tight because all the stress that I was um, experiencing. Also, you know, I missed a lot of prenatal appointments because I'm dealing with people and their kids. And I was like, what if I'm late picking up my son for daycare and I'm dealing with someone else's kids because yes. they can't get their life together in that sense. 
And I just was like, you know what? I need to be present for my kids. If I can, Lord help me to be there. So I was there and I, I really been home um, since 2006. Wow. And been I know that's a long time. <laughs> now that I think about the long time. <laughs> I didn't mean to be I didn't mean to be like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no worries, no worries. But like 2006, and my oldest one will be 16 next week. And I'm like, oh. I know I don't look like a have a 16 year old, but I'm just like, wow, I, I thank God for uh just allowing me to be present and then transition me in from you know staying at home, my kids. Um, and then starting my own business. I think it's just been, um, it's been great transition. So I'm still able to help people and yes. still be effective in the helping process without having to deal with so much of the stress that life can bring and to me or to people. Yeah. How did you, you know, a lot of people, you know, because of COVID and because of many things, being an entrepreneur now seems to be like the thing, you know, working for yourself seems to yeah. be like the cool thing, the trendy thing. And I love what you said because it helped you to find the time and mm -hmm. empowered you to be home with your family. My question to you is um, for people who are out here wondering, well, I don't know what to do. You know, I want to stay home. I want to have the benefits that you just talked about. I want to do that. Yeah. But I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What would I be doing at home? How did you discover that? um helping people doing marketing you know all of these things connecting empowering women how did you know that that was the thing that you wanted to do and stay home to do well i think it was um i know that when i had i think when i had my third or fourth child one of our um, uncles came up to me and was tell my husband that i was going to be an author that I was going to do all these things and i'm like oh right like how how is this all going to work because first of all i don't like to write <laughs> I don't. I like writing, but like, how am I gonna be an author if I don't really like to write books like that? I'm. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't see myself like that at the time. And so, um, I remember uh, my husband was working. Um, he wasn't working a job. He has just started consulting for himself and was like doing helping people build their business from yeah. you know from life, LLC all the way up. And uh, we would have people come over to our house and they would do meetings, and we would. Um, talk about and he would invite me in those meetings you know sometimes the kids would be maybe with my mother-in-law or something like that and i would come in and i just found those meetings to be so engaging so exciting helping people to plan out and carve out their businesses i was really excited about that but the one thing i was i had the question is like where are their wives like what are their wives Ooh. doing okay. what are the women doing you know and so i started a podcast or a vlog actually um, interviewing women and it was called inspired into action it still has some videos and sometimes i still interview women uh, but not so much anymore but it was inspired in action and it was like what inspires women to act and yeah. if she can do it you can do it too because yeah. it was built on um in revelations it says we're overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and yeah. that's how i felt like women can overcome or get over that hurdle like i can't do it when you see someone that looks just like you doing mm. it you can do it so you may not know how to line up all the the dots and cross all the t's but yeah. to know that you can do it is that know that it's possible and that's that's the seed that all you need is to start and then that's why i feel like we come in to help you spark that flame you know direct that passion and get you uh you know up with the system that you can scale up and um you know grow from there wow one of the things that you said i love it you have so much knowledge here and because you're giving us an insight into the why yeah. and i think that a lot of times people miss that piece um one of the things i was having a conversation with somebody the other day and i was talking to them about interviewing you actually and mm -hmm. i was just telling them uh, all yeah right i was telling them all the things that you do and you know you really support women empower women encourage all these things mm -hmm. their response was well isn't there already enough of that there's already yeah. black girl power there's always you know there's already all these things like women 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 it seems saturated right. tell me you you just did but tell me aside from the independence mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur and helping women to see value tell me some of the things for you as a person what mm -hmm. did it give what are the internal things that it gave you not the money but how did it help you inside to be able to do that um it really gives me when i help somebody i i see myself in there 
in their situation. I see my trying to have empathy or if I can't see myself in their situation, I, I, I try to have empathy, I should say. And to know that, you know, I once was there. I once was there. I needed someone um, to speak into my life when I was at home with the kids. Just um, I wouldn't say I was I wasn't using all the gifts that I was given. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I felt like I was being very beneficial in their life and helping them and, and you know, like being present. But I felt like there was always more there. That was yeah. mom side of me. I needed to nurture Tara and who I am as a person. I just think that, you know, well, who God has for me is for me. I've learned that. And, um, you know, everyone is not for everybody. I've, I've learned that too. Um, you yeah. know, just being in business. And that's what I like about being in business for myself because I can pick, choose and refuse who I want to work with. And <laughs> just, Hey, I mean, it's just real. I can say, you know what, this is that's not a good it fit. And, it's, and it probably isn't. And there's been times when I've said, oh, I'm really going to try to work for this person when I probably should have said, ah, oh, that's not going to be a good fit. So yes. I think I answered your question as far as like, what just motivates me is seeing women achieve their goal. Um, yeah. Seeing them achieve their goal. I, I haven't I haven't fulfilled all my goals. Um, I think I know there's a lot of other things that I want to do besides what I'm doing now. But when you have someone that says they come alongside you instead of just, um, you know, telling you what to do, they come and take your hand. Like, let me show you. Let me show you. Let me direct you. Let me guide you. Let me show you what I have learned so yeah. you don't have to fall through the same pitfalls that I went through. And then you can you can just walk right over it and keep moving. And that's um I love to walk right over it and keep moving. One of the things that's really awesome about your story and kind of the, the perspective that you're giving right now is that you're achieving your goals and you're pursuing your goals and you're doing all these things that could um, very much sound very independent, but you are um, married and very successful with, you know, working with your husband as well. So it's really neat to see the fact let me say it this way. It's awesome to watch the permission be given to women to say, hey, I want to pursue my dreams. And I also am building with my family. Right, right. And um, that can be challenging for some people because in this um, society that we live in, you don't always see couples moving together. You mm -hmm. usually see them moving apart or, you know, husband doing that and saying and the wife doing that and never really anything um, together. Um, I think that that sometimes is a positive and sometimes is a negative. There's some women out there that um, may look at me sometimes with the two different responses that I give them. Like, well, you, you know, you're independent. You can make up your own mind. Yes, I am. And yes, I am. However, yeah. I am also married. And um, there comes some point in time where we have to talk about things. We have to agree about things. And I just can't make the decisions that I used to be able to make on my own um, mm. anymore because I'm not, that's not who I am. I'm not a single person. I make it a point and so does my husband, like when we are talking to clients or if, if we're talking to clients, if they get to us, you know, first they talk to us, maybe a member of our team and our team qualifies them. And if they are ready to you know, like meet us, then, you know, some people don't like us maybe meeting with them together. Sometimes mm -hmm. we do. It just depends. And sometimes we all don't always meet together and really um we really hear the the client's feedback. But uh oftentimes there's some women that don't really care for meeting with me. They like to care they like to meet my husband um uh, because he's like that that big brother type of thing. You know he thinks well, hold on let me stop, let me uh, let me do a social plug here. So wait a minute. So you <laughs> said sometimes people sometimes women would prefer meeting with your husband. I know this is going to be a question. So somebody you're welcome for me asking, is that a red flag? Um, no, because he always, I'm always there, even though I may not be on camera, you know, oh. I'm always involved. I'm always intricately and say, and vice versa. Um, you know, there's some men, um, that we currently deal with. They just like dealing with me and they, um, you know, maybe their personalities don't mesh with my husband and that's fine. I just know that there's no underhand thing going on between, you know, them and me because we, I mean, we share, like, you can't see the other side of the camera, but like we share the same office space and yeah, I know things can happen, but it, yeah. I, I'm confident in my, I'm confident in God enough, not confident in my husband. I'm confident in God enough yeah. to know that like, if, if something's going on, 
please forewarn me. <laughs> please forewarn me. I mean, that's with everything, not just my husband, with my children, you know, yes. life circumstances. I'm always praying. I, I don't ever want to be caught off guard. Yeah. I don't, I don't like that feeling. I don't like yeah. that. And, so. and for the people that are that are listening, you're so transparent and I love it because I know that these are going to be questions it's like, OK, so how do they maneuver that? So what happens when? And um, even, you know, when you were talking about working with women and, you know, even your own journeys, I love that people can see you and say, hey, OK, this this is possible and there can mm -hmm. be a blueprint as it moves forward. It can be an ongoing blueprint, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> but it, it is there. You have. Um, you have a great meetup, right? That's starting. Yeah, yeah. We were meeting um, last year. Um, for, you know, every every Tuesday, every fourth Tuesday of the um, of the month, uh, women CEOs rock. So it's my meetup, and also just like my women's movement, my my tribe. We um, meet up for a networking slash um, sort of like teaching session. Um, and so when we get together, you know, we're usually hearing about a topic like for um, upcoming topics, we have someone wants to talk to us about gun control and how to handle firearms. I think that's awesome. That's dope. Like we all need to know men and women, but women especially um, need to know how to handle a firearm. I mean, if, if you're out there, out there by yourself, whatever, you need to know how to handle firearms. So he's going to come in and talk to us about that. But then, and then also we talk about other business things. Like if you want to uh, write your own book, how to go about doing that. If you want to start your own marketing agency, uh, we have a speed networking uh, component, but also um, there's sponsors that have tables that have paid on a monthly basis that they are welcome, you know, there to share their information about their business. So really just networking and uh, sometimes learning, learning new skills, skills. We had a training earlier last summer um, that was called the um, jumpstart experience. We had one okay. person talking about how to get your mind right. Another person talking about how to start your own merchandise company how to publish your book, how to start your own podcast, and then how to create your brand on um, how to po properly, I should say, pu mm -hmm. publicize your social media channels, how to, you know, there's a whole formula and how you should be posting and the information that you should be sharing to engage in your, your engage your clients. So it was a whole week of just information giving, information giving. So um, it's been very important on my heart. It stopped a little bit in um, July because my mom passed away. So mm -hmm. things halted a lot for me, but we're back up and um, ready to start again for this new year. As an entrepreneur and as a woman entrepreneur, how important is a network? And the reason why I'm asking is because, you know, there's a lot of um, opportunity online. You were mentioning online and branding and things like that. There's a lot of opportunity online, a lot of classes online, a lot of, I don't want to say meetups online, but as a as a woman and connecting, how important is it to be around people that are like minded and share ideas or growth? Um, it's extreme. It's extreme. If you want to grow, it's extremely important. Now, if you want to stay stagnant and doing the same thing that you're that you always been doing, then you know you can stay in your group. But if you want to grow and you want to learn new things. Um, you, or and also you want to sow seeds into other people. It's it, it's imperative. It's it's vitally important for your growth as a business and just as a woman. I mean, I don't know everything. I haven't arrived. I'm I'm learning new things every day. And um, you know, sometimes when I learn things, I'm like, oh, I need to create a video about that. Let me get on and I create you know um, a blog or something about something I learned because. I, I didn't learn it for me. I learned it to share with everyone else. I, that's yeah. how that's how I think. You know, everyone doesn't always think that there's some people that have um, a scarcity mentality, but I have an abundance mentality. I feel like every day I am loaded with different blessings and benefits. So um, just because I share my information with you doesn't mean that I am going to not get any more information. I'm going to be done. Yeah. I'm going to be depleted and I have nothing else to to grow my business. That's not how I think. Yeah. Where does your inspiration come from? Um, it comes from many different ways. Um, first, um, you know, definitely my belief in God. Um, I am uh wasn't always a strong believer in God, but as I've seen as I've gotten older and I've seen him move in my life, 
I am so thankful that I am a believer in Jesus Christ. So um, that's one. And two is just like women that are around uh, my life. You know, my mother, um, you know, a lot of times people say, of course, your mom. But some for some people, that's not true. Their moms not have been might not have been the best mom that they could be to that person. Um, so, you know, my mom was definitely influential in regards to exposing me to different things. Um, challenging me to have my own voice and to really um, speak up for myself and others. I seen, I've seen her do it. So, and I see my grandmother do it and my mother-in-law, you just having um, a good group of women around you that support you, that encourage you, but not, not afraid to like check you if you're going the wrong way, you know? Sure. Yeah. So definitely that's definitely important. For your um, Women CEOs Rock, your monthly uh, meetups, are you? Do you ever speak with authors? If someone is interested in being on the platform as a speaker, you can find out information about that too. But we we are always looking for speakers. Um, that you just don't have to. You can be an author. You can have a product. You can have a service. Something that you're trying to uh, promote. You, we can definitely talk about that. That is uh, that's amazing, and that that really helps because I know somebody's writing that down. Like, oh, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, you have to get yourself in front of all eyes possible, and you never know who knows who knows who knows who, and yeah. um, how you can be referred. I mean, just so many blessings have came into my life because of that. I mean, I remember when my husband and I went to this networking event, and I was like, you know, excited about it, and I was like, okay, you know, whoever I meet, I meet, and I'm always looking for the person that isn't talking to everybody. You know, there's, mm. you know, when you go to a networking event, it's usually people pocket, you know, got their little clicks. Yeah. And there was this one lady; she wasn't talking to anybody. So I went over and said, "Hello, how are you doing?" I know she wasn't talking to anybody. Started a conversation off, really um, beneficial. And it turns out she was a writer for um, Black Enterprise. No. And that's how my husband and I got into Black Enterprise. Wow. And it was nothing but uh, the blessing. And I was just telling her about the things that we do for people. And she was like, yeah. are you serious? And, you know, first she didn't believe it. And then uh, we she hired us to help her. And mm -hmm. we were we helped her build a course, build a course out, showing people how they can be um, attributing authors to different um, websites, different magazines, publications. And she made a lot of money. And she was like, oh, I need to I need to write about you guys. <laughs> so um, yeah. that was that was I mean, but that's just how that's just how God works when you are. Yeah. I don't even want to say I mean, when you when you're when your heart is pure. Yes. And you're doing things for the right reason. Uh, doors open. Yeah. Yeah. You were talking about um, her having a course. Um, mm -hmm. Now, do you do courses as well? Yeah. Yeah. We help people formulate their course. Also, we have a platform that we can host your course on. And, um, you know, it's part of a package that we put together based on your needs, based on your wants. And um, if you're interested in that, definitely go to taramatoshow.com. Um, you can just click on the button to find out more about my marketing company. If you don't see anything on there about that, definitely just send us a note and we'll or schedule a consultation. Uh, we have discovery consultations either with myself or my husband or a person on our team. And we'll try to find out how we can help service you to increase your biz now. So we know about your um, Women CEOs Rock, your monthly meetups, which are the fourth Tuesday of each month. Fourth Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. Um, if you go to taromatosho.com, you can uh, click one of the links to go to the site and sign up for reminders. We send them out. And then also um, on social media, we're at Women CEOs Rock. Mm -hmm. For somebody who may be second guessing themselves and saying, I don't know if I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you've experienced that, but from your journey, what advice would you give them if they just think, I don't know if I can do any of that? Um, if you say to yourself, I don't know if I can do that, you're right because you haven't tried. Um, you won't know if you don't try. Um, like your thing in the back says, dream big and dare to fail. Like, you know, I think that's one thing that I've learned from, you know, the previous generation of ours, you know, the people that are older than us, the next generation, is that they, it seemed like, and you know, when you listen to these documentaries, I love documentaries, I love history. 
And when you listen to these things, it seems like they weren't scared to like step out and do stuff. I'm like, like, and they had, we have adversity, but they had so much adversity. Like people that look like me and you, you can even go into a place and 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 start anything and you know god for me i, I probably have been called yellow and I, I you know all kinds of things yeah. <laughs> as my kids say you know i'm very fair skinned and you know whatever but i mean <laughs> they dare to step out there and do things mm -hmm. i mean i'm learning because um prior in the middle prior to the um virus and the pandemic we used to homeschool our kids so mm -hmm. i would teach them different things and i loved history and i loved learning about um, African Americans that we didn't know anything about. You know, you hear about mm -hmm. Martha, and you know all these people that are so prominent, and you should talk about those people. But there's some people that you don't even hear about. And yeah. I was hearing about this guy. I can't remember his name, but he was in um, Atlanta, and he started out as a barber, and he was a barber for all these professional white men. And then one of them told him about real estate, so he started investing in real estate, and then he um, opened up this nice barber shop for you know first class and i was like how how is it that we have all this greatness inside of us and then we are scared to jump out there and mm. and try a baking company or you know just whatever it is I, and i'm not belittling anyone's idea but we have we have greatness inside of us mm. as a as a as a people in general we have greatness inside of us and the only thing that stops us for greatness is ourselves and those mm. self-defeating thoughts. I have them too. That's why I have to, I have to affirm to myself all the time who I am, who's I am, whose I am, and what I'm destined to do. You know, and those are daily things that I constantly have to go over because if I start thinking about all the things I can't do, guess what? I'm not gonna be able to do them because my mind is gonna talk me out of it and then my actions will follow. Tara, thank you so much for uh, sharing that. And thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you and your show and your listeners. And I hope that I was able to uh, shed some light on some areas that they may be questioning. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they got their <laughs> paper and pen out. I'm about to hit rewind right now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. That was Tara um, giving us so many inspirational moments and at the end of the day, you know, I say this on some of the um, some of the other shows. Yes, you are the best you in the world, but she mentioned it, and I'm going to mention it again. Be brave, be courageous, and always be willing to try. You can do so many things. You just have to step out there and say, "I'm going to try, and I'm going to succeed." So, whatever you're thinking about today, whatever boat you're thinking about stepping out out of i hope today you got some encouragement some inspiration and some motivation to tell yourself when you look in the mirror that i can do this so thank you so much for watching the philip show and remember like i just said you are the best you in the world we'll see you next time Don't wait.